for the state champion, the most outstanding player of this championship game. That's selected by the only representative to cover the game. It's presented to Jamie Daniels from Toronto Central. Now for the presentation of the most valuable as selected by many History don't win today. You know, and we, we, some people paint this to lose, and uh, you know we use it as fuel in our fire. Uh, you know, we knew we knew we were a talented basketball team, and we know he's super talented. But we knew across the board that we were a really good basketball team. Who this summer had played the best of the best, and and we didn't shy away from any of the big dogs. Northwood, Richmond, I mean, you, I can keep naming them. And we had a great summer leading into uh, November, and you know, the only blemish was uh, Don Bosco and uh, John Wall had number one player in the country. But uh, it all goes to these guys, because we, we had one bad practice the entire season, and it was the third practice of the year. You're talking high school kids, 95 practice, I've been this 25 years, you normally have eight or nine or 10. We had one bad practice. They want to come at 6 o'clock in the morning. They know the deal because they're bad practice. You come back at 6 a.m. And, and that's a credit to these guys for coming every day, attention to detail, the little things. Um, very proud of you. You know, it didn't feel good losing last year. You know, we had two of our starters foul out last year. You know, like Coach said, they didn't play their best of the game. And this year, they just came back. You know, MJ, 14 points last year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> played better last year. Everybody, really. Alex Moy, having to a 6'8 guy at 6'2", you know, he did a tremendous job. I mean, I think that even though he fouled out, his defense on, on 12 was tremendous. Um, I thought he was just as strong and just as physical down low. He just gave up some inches. What are people going to remember about this Farmville team in particular and this dynasty years from now? What, what are people going to remember about this run here? Really, like you said, just a run, you know, back to back years with us coming back this year, you know, when it, we went up 15, you know, I told the guys just don't stop battling, you know, we just kept pushing out again. What was the plan with, uh, with Alex specifically on Kendra Harrison and also with the, the freshman point guard? That those were the main two. What were you uh, hoping to take away from them? Well, I'm at, I thought our pace would hopefully maybe tire him out, especially the big guy, and I thought. In and a half, he, he was he was sucking gas. Um, maybe he wasn't. It looked that way to me. He started staying off in the lane, never coming out past the uh, free throw line. Uh, JD's off is a mismatch, and, and a lot of times Judge gets the best defender, and then JD's the mismatch, and then you got you got shooters spread all around. You know, last year I think we made three threes. We had three for 24 from the line in the state championship game tonight. We, we hit eight threes, and that's our basketball. Um, we're not big in calling plays. We're big in guys making plays. And, and, and that's what we try to you know, empower these guys to be leaders on the basketball court and make plays when the opportunity presents itself. Coach, you guys wore shirts uh, pregame that said something about a boat. Can you, uh, can you describe <laughs> and explain what that means? Burn, burn the boats. Uh, you know, before we played our first game this year, we watched a, a clip about, you know, that <clears throat> just, just, when you get to that island, you know, and the Dean Dome was the island. We originally thought Reynolds was the island. Then it got changed to the Dean Dome. And I told him, I said, that's what we want. We, we don't want it to be comfortable because uh, you're never going to win a game in, with convenience. And, and so the destination got changed. And we talked all year long about being in a boat and trying to get back here. And, and when we got here, we were going to burn the boats. We weren't looking back. And we talked about it religiously this year about being on the boat, everyone being together with one mission, one common goal, and uh, everyone was bought in. 
and I can't. I, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I get to coach these guys. And when you when you get guys that want to come to practice, they were begging me the other night, Let, let's go live, let's let's practice some more, let's get four more minutes live. Uh, it's just a special group. John, obviously you get a lot of credit, and especially with 35 points, but. J.D., you came in, led the team in steals, led the team in rebounds, and contributed 14 points, all while having to go up a lot of times against a guy that was several inches taller than you. Let's talk about what was going through your head and how you were feeling, because on the biggest stage, you delivered one of your biggest games. Well, I knew I had to do something. <laughs> I had to do something. <laughs> Last year, I ain't doing that. Just had to work. I taught you 200 free throws every day in gym class. 200 free throws every day. He missed them once. I told him he, was, he won't represent, represent the second period the right way. And he missed every repeat class. He need to make the free throws. <laughs> I need to get back to the weight room now. <laughs> J.D., you said you, you didn't want to hear what it's like, but you wanted to feel it. How, how does it feel, man? Man, it feels good. We won. We got it. <laughs> ready to get back ready to get farm <laughs> ja, um, having Turquavy on there on the bench, the reunion there with him, what was that like having him back here? I mean, it felt good, you know, I think it was my sophomore year, playing with him on the team, I think he ended with, what was it, 30, 40 years? You know, I had 35 this game, he, he was just telling me what to do, how to play the game. Hey, I know the title, title mate was there with Turquavy on, was that a boost for you? Because I know the title, title mate was I know my coach, coach him. I mean, we're, we're a players program. I mean, we were trying to get guys back. I was calling guys last night. I had some, some VIP <clears throat> passes left. And, and I didn't want to give them to fans. I wanted to give them to former players. Because they built this. You know, I've been along for the ride. They built this. And uh, that's, you know, how we always try to approach our basketball program is that uh, trying to create a culture of, of hard work and excellence. And, uh, but the hard work comes first. And, uh, they've been some hard workers. So, so MJ, uh, I see you, you're young, but you play with a lot of composure. Is it because Larry Wilk was a good coach? Or are you listening? Yeah, I think it's that. <laughs> I have teammates that play with me. They tell me when I'm getting too rattled, you know, calm down and just play the game the right way. So I know that both of the teammates and coaches do. Okay, one more question. Is Larry Wilk a number one? That's because no. of all time. Carlos <laughs> 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 Central. Carlos is the player program. Ain't no individualism here. Hey, look, they got to live together, folks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, the only question I got left is, I know you losing a few seniors. MJ, you're very young. You could potentially match up with Reedsville in the future. They got two studs that are freshmen. How fun is that to go up against that level of talent on the stage? And what do you think about playing them again in the future? Maybe yeah. for a state title. Like you said, they, they are a great group of guys. You know, when you play competition, it always brings the rest out of you. So I, I thank these guys for leading the way. And if we match up, then we, we just match up. What's, what's for doing? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be a late night in the farm. Well, I promise you that. <laughs>